Act four. Till death us do part. Okay, I'm gonna try and complete this in this one video. If it goes on far too long, I'll chop it in two. So let's see how we get on. I'm sure that this hat must be in fashion somewhere, which is the scary aspect of the old wretched thing. No point, it's blown to shreds. New improved cork, the accessory with a million household uses. A cork, but a, a cork, but in and out as they say. Feels all corky to me. Odd. Why does death have an hourglass? A little redundant, I would have thought. Gee, there's hardly any sand left. It feels like it should do the job. My special patented reaping machine. I wonder if there's any market for xylophones these days. Ah, I better leave his bones alone. At least until the men in white coats have chalked around them. Hmm, he made a dreadful death, but he might make someone a damn fine desk ornament. Ooh, I'm going. I'm going. Oh, here I go. I'm still going, you know. All right, all right. Something to fill up your hourglass. I'm working on it. Honestly, you think nothing was done around here without me? Once, just once, I'd like to see an adventure based on Rinse Wind stays in bed and gets some kip while everyone else runs around and collects stupid objects on his behalf. Kind of guessing that sand will do the trick here. Okay, the walkthrough said wait. It didn't actually say walk to the other side of the screen. Never mind. Funny looking horse. A pair of saddlebags. Paired, of course, so you can lose twice as many articles as if you were carrying a single. Hey, look, a canteen. Water. Well, it's wet, runs downhill, and you can see through it. Would you want a chemical analysis? Nah, thanks, I'm not thirsty. Frogs, ah, yeah, frogs are the things I've been thinking of. But they're so small and green, and they reign supreme in this crazy Casanova's house of love. Oh, oh, oh! Ooh, much better. Yes, yes. Ooh, I like this one. Quite right. Plenty enough to go around. How'd you cook it? Sage and onions. Sage and onions? In the middle of the desert? Oh, turmeric, rose water and onions then. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes. Whoops. Well, there goes Casanunda. I'd watch what happens next, but I'll probably be here for days. OK. Popping humors. So the guy who actually gets off the camel is apparently a prospector. Popping humors. And I kind of don't want to do things without any context. So I'm coming here to speak to people and no one knows anything about him apart from Yuri here. Ah. Ah. Okay. For asking about the Fountain of Youth. All right, what about these other mystic powers then? We have their fabulous pyramid powers of time and space. We have the mystic men sitting in deserts, and we have cut-rate camels. Although they're not quite so mystic, but they can't half spit. Oh, really? Is that all? You want more? Then we have the Fountain of Youth. 
Yes, indeed, you can get a second childhood without all the dribbling and unfortunate bad type smells. Now that sounds more like it. Where might I find that? Oh, uh, I've forgotten. When they call your people fakers, they're not joking, are they? How dare you cast aspersions on my mighty powers of, um, uh, 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 what's it called? It was on the tip of my tongue. Mine's gone blank. Um, oh, oh, uh, memory. There is a prospector. What comes through here every now and again? He goes everywhere. He's been around for centuries. You ask him if he's ever seen a greater sage than Yuri Jella. There we go. Bye! So, yeah, we just have to wait for him, really. I was wrong in my assumption that we had to move off the screen. If we go to Jellybelly itself, we can't actually find him. And when we return, he disappears. So the only way we can actually really follow him is with the vultures here. Because they follow us everywhere now we stole their, their lovely arm. As far as I know, we can't actually speak to the Prospector, and as far as I know, we can't actually follow him without um, putting the arm in the satchel, and or well, saddlebag, sorry. And we're actually limited on the locations we can visit. Been there, done that. Let's leave well enough alone. And that happens with pretty much 99% of these things. So yeah, there's only one more place we can go, it's the Fountain of Youth. I don't know why I walk so far away. This place looks like a good place to sleep. Maybe I could take a nap later when I finish this game. A pedestal! Mmm! I've always wanted to be placed on one of these. Hey, it already has something on it. There's lots of sand in the bottom. The water is spurting up through a little hole in the base. I can't hold water in my bare hands and I'll only get wet trying to get some sand. Yeah, this act is very short. We just need to save death. I think it's quite... I'm quite thankful that the locations in Act 4 is limited because you have to have that one conversation with Yuri. Well, you don't actually have to have it. It's more of context, but you're not going around everywhere trying to get the clues. It wouldn't be wise to fill the canteen with sand. Yeah, that doesn't really help. So this is the last action of Act 4, but I believe there is an epilogue. I'll see you there.
Oh, damn. I forgot to shout four. Epilogue. Queen Kong. Not sure whether they spent enough on the script for this movie. It seems to be all just special effects. Hmm? Is it intermission yet? I was hoping for something nice and sticky on a stick. The only thing sticky around here is this finale. Get on with it! Well, I was kind of expecting a long credit sequence, but I remembered. We had it at the start, so I didn't want to spoil an epilogue so much. I just didn't want it to disappear, and I think that was it. But no, this is it, almost. Pretty Polly. I'd best leave it alone. Granny might get jealous. Oh, good. Oh, God! Sorry, got carried away again. I do hope the little fella's okay up there. I'll rescue him soon. <laughs> Snappy for a red man's trumpet. <laughs> Millennium hand and shrimp. Yes, it is very romantic, isn't it? <laughs> oh, bugger it. <laughs> Front the biscuit for a sneaky trouser. <laughs> I told him. You're just an old softy under that crust, aren't you? Of course, she is rather tall, but they do say size isn't important. Actually, they do make a beautiful pair, you know. <laughs> Buggery? <laughs> I mean the librarian and the giant. Do you think we should rescue him, Dean? Hmm? Um, well, I, I was just wondering if we might have to rescue her. Perhaps we'd better just let nature take its course? Got a horse, did you say? How's he going to get it up that tower with that big woman in the way? I can't just climb up the wall. Bladders! Get your bladders here! Look at that lot. Like a school of guppies at feeding time. Look at... Oh, sorry. Look at that lot. Oh, maybe it was. I must have double-clicked. I get confused talking to anybody in this game, let alone a crowd. Undead, but still trying. What are you still doing here? Doing? 
Well, I'm not dying, that's for sure. I've tried drowning, I've tried stabbing, I've tried hanging. And that's an extremely boring way to spend a night hanging around. Yes, well, I... Then I tried poison, poison snakes, poison ivy, poison potions. I even tried me some of that deep water blowfish, but do you think I dropped dead? Not a bit of it. I went to the worst reputed restaurant in Angmore Pork. And that was hard to find, let me tell you. I got a meal made by the owner's pet rat, called William. Still nothing. Can't even get a decent case of food poisoning in the town these days. In my day and age, you went in fear of your life every time you went into a street cafe. There was your basic food poisoning, your lead poisoning from the cooking pots, ground glass from the mixing pestles. Yes, look, I really have to go. And it bloody cost me 17 pence. 17! Just for a bit of fly-blown blowfish. For that kind of money, you'd expect me to throw in William the Rat as well. I ask you, how's a body supposed to get its last rites in this day and age? I am going to die if it's the last thing I do. Aha, a broom. I've heard of the theory behind them, of course, but there's usually bylaws against apprentice wizards using them. Leave that alone. It's not for the likes of you. Bladders, get your bladders here. Hello there, young man. Having a good day? This is clearly some attempt at sarcasm. Haven't you got anything better to do than sit here all day? Well, it's not every day I get to see a man torn to pieces by a giant elf. Oh, yes. Point taken. Are you sure this is where you want to be? I mean, it's not exactly safe, is it? I don't know. The safest place seems to be wherever you are. I heard all those comments you made about the animation budget, you see. She's right there, you know. You can swap minds with this raven, can you? Yes. I'm very good at it. Oh, go on. You can't possibly manage to put all your knowledge and experience into that tiny little avian brain. Ha! <laughs> of course I can. Just watch. What a clever woman. Clever, yet oddly dumb. OK, goodbye, Raven. That would be cruel. Oh. Now, Granny isn't the sort who suffers fools gladly. As a suffering fool myself, I'll go along with it. I've kind of ruled myself out a couple, a couple of dialogue options. Your typical flying witch's broom. Looks like it's past its 1,000 mile warranty. Wood and straw. What more can I say? My old mate Dibbler. It is my ultimate aim to convince him to sell himself off to the army for target practice. Bladders! Get your bladders here! Only a groat apiece, and even then I'm cutting my own throat. Bladders? Are you taking the pi- Bladders? Bladders, my friend. A rustic forerunner of the more familiar rubber balloon, as enjoyed by children. This is absolutely true. Who says computers aren't educational? I've got sheep bladders, vole bladders, moose bladders. You want a bladder? I'm your man. You know, I believe you. You can do other things besides blow them up, you know. Oh, dozens of uses a good bladder. Although, right now, I admit I can only think of uh, one or two. Uh, well, uh, one, really. All right. I'd like to buy some bladders, please. Certainly, Squire. Now then, what sort? We've got your rat, uh, your vole, that's the field vole, meadow vole, and the killer clatchian vole. The killer vole? Oh, yeah. You know the ones, six feet long, covered in poisonous spines, with incisors like chisel blades. But I thought voles were sweet little things, you know, small and brown and covered with fur. Not these ones, sir. Take your arm off in an instant. They've levelled old continents. Obliterated ships filled with puppies, baby kittens and innocent nuns. Wait a minute. These look like sheep bladders. It comes to something when a poor sheep is finding its essential organs floating around as kiddies balloons. Sheep, sir? Never, sir. Catch me arming sweet little creatures with curly wool and big brown eyes? Nah, not on my life. Cut me own throat if I tell a lie. These have been taken from Clatchian voles, 
a life form so foul, sir, so venomous, so putrid and psychotic that the hunters, sir, the hunters were all awarded medals for services to humanity. Clatchian voles is like rabid sharks on legs, sir. Oh, well, that's all right then. In that case, give me some of them. Right you are, squire. I just hope they had time to go to the lavatory first, though. OK. Well, there's only one thing in our inventory we haven't actually really used. Apart from the broom. Animal bladders. Empty and deflated. I'm not blowing into those. I think that is it, really. Uh, bladders! Almost. Get your bladders here! So this is going to be my last action of this Let's Play. Um, it's been an experience coming back. It's been a couple of years since my last Let's Play. There's been some technical issues. Te te technical issues. Got some speech issues as well. But yeah, thank you very much for your patience and for the comments and for your time. I will be back soon, maybe before Christmas with another Let's Play. Bladders, anyway, it's time to complete this one. Here. Thank you again, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure doing this for you. Take care of yourself. See you soon. supposed to rest in peace, you know? Run! It's a falling giant woman! And that's another thing. In my day, girls were sweet, demure little thing, not 60 foot tall monsters like you apparently get now. And I'm also pretty sure that in my day, they all actually wore something under the... Sometime later. So, it's you at last, is it? So where do you think you've been? Sorry, it's been a bit of a confusing week. Confusing? I've been undead since half past ten on Tuesday morning. I mean, I wouldn't complain, but I lost 17 pence just on blowfish since I died. You'd think the afterlife would be cheaper, wouldn't you? Well, I've said sorry, haven't I? Come on, let's have a curry before we go. My treat. Ah, well, all right, that uh, is rather decent of you. By the way, I tried strangulation, drowning, poison, traffic accidents. I even listened to improvised jazz music. But that just made me wish I was dead. Or that the musicians were dead at any rate. How did I finally manage to go? You got sat on by a giant elven queen. Now there's one I never thought of trying. Still, if you gotta go... There's a place you're always welcome That's as nice as it can be Everyone can get in, cause it's absolutely free. That's death. No need to take a breath. Just lie around all day, with not a single bill to pay. Hooray, that's death. No more sicknesses or flu. If you've lived beyond your means, you can die beyond them too Boo hoo Well the greatest and the finest mm, Have already died Why not simply join them On the other side That's death Say farewell to all your bills Rip up all your wills And pop your final pills
pills Amen, that's death It's a tater tate with hate If you're not feeling great Then it's the best way to lose weight Mate Nothing here to hurt you No one's here to nag Come die with me If your life's a drag Yeah.